It's Erev Chanukah. Should we talk some Parsha? Yes, we'd love to. So this week we're shifting from Yaakov being our main character and start following Yosef. And I think it's time that we corrected one of the greater misconceptions that there is about Yosef. As we see at the end of the Parsha, Yosef is in prison with the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, Sarah Alfim, Sarah Mashkim, and they have their dreams and Yosef solves their dreams. And as he's solving Sarah Mashkim's dream, he tells him that you will get your position back. You will get to serve Paro again. And when you do, please tell about me that I'm here in prison for no reason. And as really happens, Sarah Mashkim forgets Yosef and Yosef remains an extra two years in prison. And if you ask anybody, why did Yosef have to stay an extra two years in prison? They will tell you, well, it's because he trusted Sarah Mashkim to take him out and he lost faith in God. He lost faith in the Kodesh Baruch Hu to take him out. Maybe this is based on what Rashi says over there. But if you take a second to think about who Yosef is and what do we know about Yosef? Yosef Atzadik, the one we call Tzadik Yosod Olam, the one that went through so much pain throughout the entire Parsha, being thrown out of his house, being thrown to the bottom of the pit, being sold as a slave, and yet again, continuing to climb and rebuilding himself and then again being falsely accused thrown into prison again to the bottom and also there he doesn't give up he doesn't despair he starts rebuilding himself to the stage where the entire prison is in his hands and everybody again respects him and he doesn't let go of those dreams that he had yet through this entire suffering and everything he goes through he doesn't lose his faith he's the one that the Torah testifies on him that he walks around and mentions Hashem and everything he does everything he does everybody can see it's not because of him it's because Hashem gave it to him as Rashi says Shem Shemaim Shagu B'fiv every time he said something it was thank God please God with God's help his relationship with God was always there it was always clear to everybody to see this Yosef Atzadik he's the one that people think trusted a human and not a Kaddish Baruch Hu. we're talking about Yosef we're talking about the role model of Bitacha, the role model of trusting a Kaddish Baruch Hu. he's the one who would trust a human and not a Shem even if you base this on Rashi and what Rashi said you have to understand exactly what Rashi said so what is Rashi saying here and what exactly is the story what's happening at the end of the Parsha that's a wonderful question always really bothered me but something I noticed lately is that although we describe this as being a problem Yosef ends up leaving prison thanks to Sarah Mashkim who tells Paro about Yosef so if it's such a bad thing why does Hashem make that be his way to get out of jail shouldn't he be teaching him a lesson showing that he's not gonna go out of prison with Sarah Mashkim he's actually proving the opposite but you know when we actually look into Rashi we don't see Rashi say anything negative about that the Midrash doesn't say anything about why did Yosef tell Sarah Mashkim? He got an extra two years because he asked for help. The opposite. This is what a man of Bitachon is supposed to do. He's supposed to have faith in Akadosh Baruch Hu, but he's supposed to do his effort. He's supposed to put what he can. He's supposed to push as much as he can. Believe in God, but do his effort. And that effort was the right effort and even was successful. So what is Rashi saying? When we look deeper at Rashi, we actually notice that Rashi is not talking about Yosef's actions of asking for help. That's his effort. As we said, that's a positive thing. It's not about what he did. It's about him actually depending on this Sarah Mashkim to remember Yosef and get him out. And it's what we spoke about quite some time ago. There's a difference between putting my effort and doing what needs to be done. And that's great. Even if I have full faith in God, God expects me to do my best. But the second thing is depending that those actions are what's going to get me out. Think about what happens in jail. He sits there for another two years. Maybe in the first month, he's still expects Sarah Mashkim to remember and get him out. But very quickly, you know, he gives up and says, nothing's going to come out of this. And exactly at the moment when he finally gives up, that's when his effort can suddenly succeed. As long as he depended on that effort, which he was supposed to do to bring him out of jail, that effort couldn't actually do the job. But once he didn't depend on that effort, he actually gave up on it. That's when that same effort that he did rightfully so was the one that was able to take him out. Rashi doesn't say that he was punished. He says, Mitoch Shetalaba, whose cock he was needed to stay for another year. You know, if you depend on human beings, that's sort of the result. I don't think it's a punishment. It's more a lesson. You need to put the effort in. You need to do what you need to do. But at the end of the day, know that that's your part. The rest is in the hands of Akadosh Baruch Hu. Whether the success will come through Sarah Mashkim or through somewhere else, who knows? You did your effort. Now it's up to Akadosh Baruch Hu. But I think that if we look further in that same Midrash that Rashi is basing on, we learn another lesson, an even greater one. Later on, the Midrash says that the reason that Yosef stayed for two years was because Akadosh Baruch Hu wanted him to come out by the dream 
of Paro. Think of it. If Yosef would have come out when he wanted to, he wouldn't end up where he ended up. He wouldn't be the second most important person in Mitzrayim, almost the king of Mitzrayim. That is because he ended up coming out through Paro's dream. So in essence, the Midrash is saying, it's not about Yosef doing the wrong thing. Yosef's doing what he could. He's putting his efforts in. Sometimes, even when you've done everything right, you trusted in God, you put your effort in, at the end of the day, it's just not the right time. Sometimes you just need to wait. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows when that right time is. We gotta be patient. We gotta put our effort in it. We gotta kavel Hashem. Chazak v'yametz libecha v'kavel Hashem. Just keep hoping. Believe and have faith that when the time is right, when the perfect time is right, that's when that same effort that he did two years ago will finally bring its fruits and achieve what Yosef was trying to achieve. Not when Yosef thought it would happen, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw was the right moment to really reach what Yosef was actually truly dreaming of fulfilling his own dreams. I agree 100%. And as I was saying in the beginning, and as you were saying, it's not necessarily a punishment over here for Yosef staying an extra two years in prison, but it's just something that had to happen. That's the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu planned for things to happen. Yosef did not lose faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yosef was full of faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The first thing Yosef says when he comes out of prison to Paro is only if God lets me. And again, like you were saying, if you read Rashi well, you look at the end of Rashi, Rashi says also part of the issue of here was that Yosef asked a Mitri, the Reavim. Reavim is someone who's full of himself, somebody who is a narcissist, thinks that everything is because of what he does and everything is about him and leaves no place for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And because the route had to go through a Mitri like that, it had to take longer. Maybe also so that Salah Mashkim will not take the credit for himself, as you were saying so rightfully and as other Midrash says, it's about being in the the right time and when all the different pieces come together that can allow for things to happen. I was once talking to a friend of mine and as we see in the business world, we see in Shiduchim, we see even in school, we see with families, sometimes you are waiting for this redemption. You're waiting for this thing to happen, something that you know is going to happen, that you feel within you. It's your dream. You dreamt about it when you were a kid. You knew this is the way you're supposed to go. You know this is the direction you want to go. And you're doing everything you can. You're pushing in all the directions that you have to. And you're full of faith in the Baruch You're full of trust. You're full of Vitochon. You know it's not up to you. You know it's because HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants. And when HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give it, that's when it will happen. So you're standing there and you get stuck. And nothing is moving and nothing is happening. And like you mentioned, when you think about Yosef being in that prison, Yosef being full of Vitochon, waking up every single day after Sarah Mashkim goes back to Paro, he saw that what he said really came true. And yet every single morning he wakes up and nothing happens. And he's still stuck. And he's still stuck. But he doesn't lose his faith because sometimes it's about that fact that you have to give time for time. Sometimes Sometimes time just has to go by. Things have to happen that don't necessarily have to do with you, that are not because of you, that are not about you. And there's a different Gemara that says that any person that tries to push the moment, who tries to get his redemption closer, he will end up being pushed by the moment, meaning missing his moment, not having the moment or even the longer time he's supposed to have just because he was trying to push it closer. And Rav Cook explains this so wonderfully that sometimes the person feels that time has come for his redemption to happen, for his potential to finally come out in reality, that it's full yet the time isn't ready. And says Rav Cook that that's a good thing for two reasons. First of all, because you have that passion within you. Hold on to that passion. Hold on to that feeling and continue to wait until it happens. Yet on the other hand, ask yourself, maybe there's something more I have to do. Maybe there's an extra thing I have to add in. Maybe there's an extra development I have to develop within myself to be more ready, to be better. And then Rav Cook says, when the time finally does come, the time will make sure that you are pushed in. The time will open up its arms for you, for your redemption, for your potential to come out and then you will be ready at your fullest. And maybe again, looking at Yosef, within a few hours, he went from the bottom of the prison, from the lowest place in Egypt, to becoming second in command, as you said, in Egypt, in charge and everything, as we'll be reading next week. Yeah, so as you're saying, when it's the wrong time, you can just keep waiting and waiting. But when it's the right time, it just takes a moment. And we actually see this in Hanukkah, where they come to the Mikdash and they want to light the menorah, but it's not time. You know, they need to wait for Tahara. They need to wait to get pure oil. They don't have the oil and they need to just sit and wait. But I think Hanukkah is also teaching us something else, which we see Yosef do. Don't just sit and wait for the right moment. Even if you have one thing you can do, and as Rav Benji Levine said in the previous video that Rav Arya taught him, is that the real miracle of Hanukkah is not the fact that the menorah lit for eight days. It's the fact that they had enough oil for one day and they went and lit it. What's the point? They have to wait. There's still time. That's not up to you. Leave time 
to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. You do your part. Don't try to do God's calculations. Leave it up to Hashem. You do what you can do when you can do it. And when the time is right, the things will come together and you will see a full redemption, a full Yeshua. Amen. Beautiful. For more Talking Torah videos on different topics, check out our YouTube channel.